What's up everybody, how's it going? It's Burke, aka Dansquake here and welcome to another Final Fantasy X video. In this one I'm going to be looking at something which has a bit of a love-hate relationship with the Final Fantasy X community and that is Blitzball. Now I've always been someone who's enjoyed Blitzball quite a lot and it's never something I've really shied away from doing in my runs when I need to do it. Now it does have some pretty serious flaws and it can be incredibly frustrating and annoying to play sometimes but I think as a general premise, I've always enjoyed Blitzball, and especially for me at least, when it gets difficult and when it's challenging, that's when both Blitzball is at its worst and at its best. And that's something that I'm gonna be exploring in this particular video as I set myself the challenge of trying to create the most unbalanced and difficult Blitzball match that I could. This I think has particular context because we know from the story, of course, that the Besaid Aurochs are an incredibly bad team in 13 years, they never won a single game. But just how difficult could it be to win a game of Blitzball, potentially? When we're facing the Luka Goers in the storyline, especially if you haven't learned the Jack shot for Tidus, even the Luka Goers can be a very difficult match. And for me, what I always found even more interesting is that the Besaid Aurochs, without Tidus, actually managed to defeat the Albed in the semi-finals of the tournament, which always blows my mind because I'm like, whoa, the Albed are even more difficult than the Luka Goers, and of course they have the best goalkeeper in the game by far. How the hell did the Besaid Aurochs score three times against the Albed Sykes? Now my theory on that is that potentially there might have been another goalkeeper in goal other than Nimruk, but that's something I've never really been able to confirm, unfortunately. But in this video I set myself the challenge of trying to figure out what could be the most difficult matchup that I could create. Who is the strongest team that you could potentially face in Blitzball. So to be able to do this, I decided to have a few ground rules to keep things a little bit more fair. Now, due to the nature of Blitzball, there are a million and one ways to kind of set things up and limitations you can give yourself to make it harder. What I wanted to do was to try to keep it simple and say that theoretically, when you reset the game's data so that everyone is at their lowest possible level, what team could you face that would be the hardest one to beat in a match. So instead of, let's say, the Luka Goers being in the storyline final, which lineup of players would be the most difficult to beat for that Besaid Aurox team? And so I sat down to do some research and to decide who I believe would be the toughest team to face in Blitzball at base levels. And this is what I was able to come up with. And then you'll start to see how some of these matches played out and why this could potentially be the most difficult game in Blitzball. Over the years I've played a lot of Blitzball and I'm by no means like a, a super Blitzball expert but I've always been good enough to, to win the games unless I've been extremely unlucky as some of you guys would have seen from the Final Fantasy X LP but in general I think I have a pretty decent handle on Blitzball and what it takes to make it easier and more difficult. Once you've seen the team that I've matched up against and you've seen some of the matches in action, if you have a team that you think is even more difficult to defeat than my one, definitely share it and it's something that I could make content for in the future as I try to defeat the most difficult team in Blitzball. So, let's start with attacking players. Now, of course, the most obvious thing is for them to have a high shooting stat and to have high endurance so that your defenders aren't able to stop them. Now, because Keeper is absolutely hopeless at level 1 in goal, and when he doesn't have any abilities like Super Goalie, etc., he only has five catching. This means that pretty much any player with a shot of about 12 or more can score from pretty much most places within your half of the sphere pool if they're not being blocked. So it's a pretty low requirement. There's a lot of attacking players who have a 12 or more shot. So to make it even harder, there's some other things I wanted to consider other than just who has the highest shooting stat and who has the highest endurance. One of the toughest aspects to deal with in Blitzball is when you have lower level players who actually get the ball but then they get chased down and their stats are too low to be able to dribble through or to make a pass and then they lose the ball. So our two defenders are Jasu and Botta in this circumstance and those two guys have pretty low endurance and they have pretty low passing. So this would mean that even if somehow they manage to tackle and actually win the ball from the attacker of the other team, if this attacker happened to have a good tackling stat and had high blocking, then it would mean that if any of those guys caught one of your defenders, it was pretty much game over because they would be able to tackle your defender and win the ball back. Or if you didn't try to dribble through and you tried to make a pass, they would just block it 
and continue on their way towards your goal. So that's why I wanted my attackers to have a good mix of not only attacking stats, but also the ability to take the ball away from your defenders if they happen to encounter them in a break situation. And for this, I decided upon two players that I thought fit the bill the best. First up is Blapper from the Albed Sykes. Anyone who's faced these guys at early levels would know that this guy's an absolute beast. He's a fantastic all-rounder. He's got 13 shooting, 13 endurance, 9 passing, 5 tackling, which is pretty good for an attacking player, and he has 11 block. This basically means that if Blapper ends up facing off against one of your players, he has a chance of being able to tackle you and take the ball, and he's almost certain to block any kind of passes you try to do when he's facing you. And well, of course, 13 shot is more than enough to get it done, and 13 endurance is notably higher than your defender's tackling stats, so Blapper is a beast at base levels. Now, it is a slight cheat, because even at base levels, he begins at level 3, which gives him a slight advantage, but that's why the challenge is to try to do it at base level. It doesn't mean that everyone is necessarily level 1, it just means whatever the lowest level that they can play as, according to the game, that's what we're going to take to be their base level once you do reset data, and Blapper's is three. So after Blapper, I decided that my second attacker is actually going to be Vilucha. If you don't know who Vilucha is, you can actually scout her from Besaid, and she is an incredibly powerful attacking player. Now, in terms of stats, she is already a level four at base, so that already makes it much more difficult. She has 14 shooting, which is one of the highest base level stats of any player in the game. It basically means she can score from anywhere within halfway. She's an absolute beast. She has 11 endurance, which is not the highest, but in general, it's enough to avoid losing the ball against our defenders. But for me, the real tough side of Vilucha is the fact that she has nine tackling ability. And this means that whether she faces up against Jesu or against Botta, if she tackles them, she will pretty much always take the ball. And she has a blocking stat of 10. So again, she's that real nemesis combination of being extremely powerful attackingly, but also if your defenders end up encountering her, it's pretty much game over. She's going to take the ball off them and she's going to go on to score. So Blapper and Vilucha are my two attacking players that I think are the hardest ones to face for the Besaid Aurox at base level. So the person in midfield needs no introduction really, but we are of course going to have Brother in the mix. Brother starts at level 1 at base, but even at level 1, his stats are absolutely bonkers. So the most important one, I think, and the reason he makes the team for me is because he has 75 speed at base level. Speed, as anyone who's played a lot of Blitzball will know, is one of the main factors for making a game easy or difficult. With 75 speed, not only is he able to literally swim away from your defenders when he's trying to go in on goal, but it means he also interferes with everything because he can catch everyone across the sphere pool. So the 75 speed is just deadly. For a midfielder, he has 14 shooting, which is as high as Vilucha, which is just absolutely insane. It means that he can also pretty much score from the halfway. He has 14 passing, which is just too high for any of our players to block with any consistency. He has 8 endurance, which isn't that high, but it's not that common that he's going to be facing off against our defenders. He's more than strong enough to get through Letty, and so 8 endurance is enough for him. He has 6 tackling, which isn't huge, but because of the fact that he gets involved in everything, a lot of the time he's there in conjunction with other defenders and then he combines his 13 block to become an absolute nuisance both attackingly and defensively for a midfielder. So the midfielder of choice in this little challenge is going to be brother. Next up in defense we have a player who a lot of people will know and that is of course Rop and he's another one of these guys. He starts off at level 5 at base stats which is just huge. He has pretty decent endurance for a defender of 9, which means our attackers basically can't take the ball back off him. So if either Waka or Tidus or Datto tries to tackle Rop, they just will not be able to get the ball. His passing is 10, which again means our attackers just don't have enough to be able to take the ball off him when he tries to make a pass. His 11 tackling is very good, but unfortunately the only silly thing here is that the game gives him drain tackle 3, which is a bit of a shame because he already has a lot of much better abilities available to him which would actually make the game even more difficult. So if you want to challenge yourself even more, you could go into the Fire Fantasy X editor and potentially give Rop one of his other abilities to start with instead of Drain Tackle 3, which isn't quite as useful, I would say. Now, he's a great all-round defender and he's always quoted as one of the best defenders to recruit if you're playing, but he's the one that's probably the most interchangeable, potentially. There are some other defenders 
that have very similar stats to him. So Rop isn't an absolute lock-in for this one, but I think he's good enough to make the cut and to be on the team. He's a beast and he's a difficult defender to deal with. And to be honest, one of the reasons why it's not that important is because of who his defensive buddy is and the way that that's actually going to manifest within the game itself. So the second defender I have is Caillou. Now, Caillou is a potentially interesting choice and maybe not everyone would have gone for him. But again, the challenge is at base levels. So if you were at level, let's say, 20, 30, 40, maybe he's no longer one of the best defenders to use. But for this specific challenge, Caillou is an absolute menace. And for me, at least, the two main reasons for that is because, one, his speed is slightly higher than the base of 60. He has 63 speed. This means that both for Waka and for Titus, Caillou will always catch them eventually. They won't be able to swim away from him, which is pretty huge. So that 63 speed, I think, is an important stat. And his tackling is 15 at base. That's already way more than Titus's endurance and also Waka's. So tackling-wise, he's an absolute beast. He has 9 endurance and 8 passing, which again is enough, considering how weak the Besaid Aurochs attacking players are. And so most of the time when he has the ball, he can get himself out of trouble by making a pass or dribbling through one of the attackers and then making a pass. And his 6 block is not that good. But again, because the Besaid Aurochs are so weak, 6 block plus our goalkeeper, plus any other defenders that get involved into the mix, usually that 6 block is not going to be exposed in this particular challenge. So he can get away with it. But that 15 tackling, it basically means that for a large, large majority of the time, if he goes one-on-one -on -one with Tidus or Waka, he will take the ball off them. And because whichever team you choose, you basically only ever have one player that can score. So it's either going to be Tidus or it's going to be Waka. Then basically, Rob is never going to have that much to do. Whichever defender is defending against Datto, they're going to have a pretty easy day because Datto is literally incapable of scoring against Nimrod anyway. So Caillou, in this particular scenario, is the defender that matters. Whoever is going to be the best at stopping Waka or Titus specifically is going to be the best choice. What's also even kind of amusing to me is the fact that Caillou has 12 catching. Even at base levels, he's not a goalkeeper, but he has more than double the catching stat of keeper, which is pretty hilarious. Now, speaking of catching and keepers, of course, in goal we have Nimrod. It's not even really close. Uh, his 18 catching at base level, at level 1, is just absolutely ridiculous. And there is pretty much no other choice for anyone that you'd want to put in here for a challenge match against the most difficult team that you could face. So that is the challenge. That is the team that we're going to be trying to beat at base levels with the Besaidorox. We've got Blapper, Vilucha, Brother, Rop, Caillou, and Nimrook. An absolute space jam of a team. They are a seriously tough bunch to try to beat. So I do think it's worth understanding just how the mechanics of the RNG side of Blitzball work because we've all been stung by it and had really annoying situations where the numbers sometimes just don't make sense. And so I've done a little bit of research on this. I've never been able to find like an official explanation of this. Um, it's probably in the Ultimania somewhere, but I've not come across like a website that shows an official piece of documentation about it. But from what I've been able to find, it does seem to be the case that there's three particular stats in Blitzball that can vary by 50%, so plus 50% or minus 50%. And those three stats are tackling, so AT, block, BL, and catching, CA. So once you think of these three stats and the fact that they can vary by 50%, then you start to understand how the RNG mechanics could work. And so you can see the potential outcomes of certain situations. So let's take a look at our friend Nimrook so that this makes sense. Nimrook has a catching stat of 18 at base level, and this can go up by 50% or down by 50%. So down 50% means that he has a lower bound of 9, and up by 50% means he has an upper bound of 27. So any shot that comes into Nimrook's goal that is below 10, it means that he is absolutely 100% guaranteed to catch it or save it, regardless of any RNG. But it also means that any shot up to and including 27 coming into his goal, there is a chance that he ends up saving the shot, which is just absolutely insane. So you can start to see again why it's so tantalizing for the Besaid Aurochs with base level Titus, because he would have the highest shooting on the team at 10. Datto would never have a chance, doesn't matter how close he is to the goal, he could shoot a million times in a row and Nimrod would save it every single time because his shot stat is only 8. 
but Titus, because it's 10, he has a very slim chance of scoring a goal if he manages to get right up in Nimrod's grill and fire a shot at his face to see if he can break through that 18 catch. So that's the way it works, and 50% is such a huge number that it can cause a lot of frustration and heartbreak depending on the scenario. Now just to flip the script here, if you look at Keeper, this is another reason why he is so abysmal in goal. His catching stat is 5. This means that if he goes up 50%, he's on 7.5. Now I don't have any official confirmation here, but whenever I've run into decimal places in Fire Fantasy X, I've always seen that the game rounds down. So my guess is, again, it will round down, and so the maximum catch that Keeper can have is 7 even if he performs great on the RNG. So this means that any shot coming into Keeper at 8 or above is guaranteed to be a goal. And the team we're facing has someone with 13 shot and two people with 14 shot. So you can start to see the issues there. And the lower bound is even funnier because if you take 50% away, that leaves him with 2.5 catch. If the game really does round down, which I'm assuming it does, that means that his catching can be as bad as 2 so someone shooting at him with only three shot can still score a goal against Keeper. That's how bad the guy is in goal, at base levels especially. So it's pretty insane, and all of this obviously adds to the difficulty and the randomness and the RNG aspect of trying to beat this difficult team in Blitzball. So before I show you how I did in this particular challenge, I want to mention that I think there's two different flavors of this challenge depending on, on how difficult you actually want to make it for yourself. And interestingly enough, it's actually a lot more possible to win when you have a Waka in the team versus when you have Titus. So let me explain this. If you want to go for the absolute most hardcore challenge possible with the Besaid Aurox and not, for example, having a team of like the absolute slowest and worst players deliberately on your team, then the team to go for is the one where Titus is on the team and it's Titus, Datto, Letty, Jesu, Botta, Keeper. That is the team where you're going to find it the hardest. The reason for this is, is when you reset data, Titus is still at level 2, so he doesn't have any tech slots. So he can't use any sphere shot and he can't use jack shot. This means he only has his stats to rely on, and especially at level 2, they really aren't that good. He has 10 endurance and 10 shooting, which against a lot of teams gives him a shot at scoring goals. But against this particular team, you can already see the major problem here. He has 10 shooting and Nimrook has 18 catch. So that means that it's almost going to be impossible for even Titus to score a goal, let alone anyone else on the team. So that is the hardest flavor of the challenge. And especially if you're doing an exhibition match, then they're not going to gain experience in the first half. So this means that you are stuck with this setup for the entire match and you have to try to get Titus to score against Nimrook with only 10 shooting, which is close to impossible. If you want to give yourself a fighting chance of beating this team, then you need to put Waka into the team. Waka, even at base level, he starts at 3, so he has a tech slot and he has Venom Shot. This means that when you add Venom Shot to his 13 base shooting, he ends up with 16, which gives him a way better chance of scoring against Nimrook than you do for Titus. Now, even with Waka, it gets extremely difficult, so if I were you, I would personally start with the Waka variant, leave Titus out of the team and just go for the pure Besaid Aurochs team with Waka, Datto, Leti, Jasu, Botta, and Keeper, and see if you can potentially beat this team. I guarantee you, it's going to be very tough unless you get some seriously, seriously good RNG. So you would have seen in the background as I've been talking about this, uh, how my attempts have been going. It's extremely difficult. The only chance you have, I would say, is if you win the first blitz off and you manage to score the goal, and then you try to stay ahead. Of course, again, every challenge is kind of different. You could choose to potentially exploit the swimming behind the goalkeeper trick if you do manage to score the first goal. But let's say you don't allow yourself the use of a cheat like that, then potentially it could be a very long time before you land a win against this particular team. So that's the setup that I've decided to go for. It was a lot of fun. I have spent a few hours already having some attempts and I've had no success so far. I managed to get a 2-2 draw with the Waka variant, but with the Titus variant, I was absolutely nowhere near it. And so even for people who've played a lot of Blitz, this is a very difficult matchup to try to win. So if anyone is watching this and is curious, I think it's a fun little challenge to do if you do enjoy Blitzball. You can set this up using Fire Fantasy X Editor. You can set the teams up how you want them. And then once you reset data, everyone's going to be at exactly the same levels that you see in this particular video. 
and it is quite fun to try and give it a run and see if you can do this almost Space Jam-like challenge against the most difficult team in Blitzball, potentially. So I'd encourage you guys to give it a go. I think what I'll do potentially is to do a live stream a little bit later down the line and see if during the live stream I can actually beat this team. And uh, you guys should enjoy that because if there's one thing that I know the, the Dan's Great audience enjoys is watching me struggle when I play Blitzball. So I think that would be a fun live stream idea and it's something I'll definitely be doing. So that's it from me for this one. I didn't manage to beat this team yet. I have had a fair few attempts and it's definitely, definitely possible. But with the setup that I've designed for this particular challenge in this video, it is definitely pretty tough. And what I'd like to see is what do you guys think is the most difficult team to play against with these particular restrictions? And if anyone is able to pull it off, I'd love to see especially the Tidus variant of this team when he's at level 2 and he doesn't even know Jack Shot being able to defeat this team because that for me is like the ultimate RNG challenge but if anyone manages to pull it off I would love to see it so if you ever end up doing it uh, hit me up on social media and show me the video to it because I would love to see it but I myself will definitely be giving it another go in a live stream in the future because it was quite a lot of fun to try to beat those guys and they are a very formidable team so I hope you guys enjoyed this something a little bit different you guys know I love a bit of Blitzball and I did feature the kid who wants to be a Blitzball in the latest Five Fantasy X video that I did last month. So I was like, you know what, I'm in a Blitzball kind of mood and I want to do something a little bit different and challenge myself to try to find the most difficult team for the original Aurochs to beat. I guess you could go even further and try to set up a team that's even worse. But the only thing about that is that you have to at least make it theoretically possible. Basically, the attacking player that you use has to have a shooting stat of 10 minimum Otherwise, it literally becomes impossible to ever score against Nimrod anyway. And that's why the original Aurochs are so well balanced for this, because they are a terrible team, but they just about have enough, even with Tidus, and a slight chance with Waka to actually be able to score. But if, for example, you put, let's say, the Killika Beasts front line there, they just would not be able to score against Nimrod ever, and so there wouldn't really be much of a challenge there. So if you guys come up with some other challenge ideas for Blitzball, I'd love to hear it. And I'd love to give it a go and see if I can win because they're the kind of challenges that for me at least uh, they're a lot of fun. And even though they are going to be RNG reliant, it's still like that kind of unpredictability and trying to figure ways around difficult situations is always fun to do for me, uh, especially in Blitzball as well. So if you do come up with any Blitzball challenge ideas for me to try, I'd be happy to, to live stream them for you guys and we'll all have fun with that too. So thank you all for watching. A huge shout out as always to all of the channel members and everyone on Patreon. You guys are a huge support. And if you are interested in supporting the channel above and beyond and gaining some perks for doing so, please do check out the membership options and my Patreon to have a look at what's available. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you soon. Take care.